the hunter. He's out in the woods. He's been scoping, tracking, waiting for that, that moment. He wants the big buck. He wants that deer. He uses all, all of the knowledge and, 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 and understanding of experience that he has for this moment. He's up in his deer stand. It's early morning. He gets out there or before, before sunrise, sets up, nestled into his, into his stand, waiting for that moment. Here comes that buck. The hunter said, let's, let's, let's go with bow. The hunter puts his arrow in, gets his sight set in, waits for that moment for a long shot, lets it go. But he realizes as he lets the arrow go that he missed his spot. And he knows it. Any, any real hunter, any good hunter knows, uh-oh, that didn't feel right. I don't think I hit, hit the, uh, the kill spot. Arrow goes. Hits a hits let's say hits a upper one of the say muscles in the in, in the leg and the deer takes off. Now the deer begins to bleed. Slowly blood and life is going out of the deer. It's been hit. It's been wounded by the hunter. But that deer knows that his blood is flowing. I got to get to water. If the deer can get to the water, she can begin to drink the water. She can, pin, she can run her, her wound into the water. She knows the water will begin to help her heal. It, the water will save the deer's life. There's a song. That I used to sing to my, my little girl when she was little. She was a little child. Every once in a while she'd say, Daddy, sing that to me again. Excuse me. As the deer panteth for the water so my soul thirsteth after you. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. <clears throat> you alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. Amen. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. Have you been wounded? Has the hunter, the enemy, has he, has he, has he, has he reached, pulled back his arrow and attacked you with depression? with loneliness, with despair, with a broken heart, with whatever it is, a wound in your spirit. Somebody has said something about you. It just, it just hurts your spirit inside. Somebody you, somebody you loved and trusted has broke your heart. Folks, here we are. I want to bring a message titled Depression and loneliness depression and loneliness folks it's it's honestly i i i couldn't see this any other way that it is a part of the normal christian life amen and all that song that, that, I, that i just sang in that story that i started off with my daughter bought this for me because you know she this is i don't know how many years ago but i've had this on my desk here you know and, uh, I guess, you know, amen, even though one of his, his antlers is about very fall off. <laughs> so, 
anyways, guys, um, I want to talk about uh, depression again and loneliness, and uh, and it is a very, I believe, it truly is an epidemic issue in our in our world and our society on different levels for different reasons, uh, different situations and circumstances bring it on for different people. But nonetheless, it's depression. Nonetheless, there's a loneliness that comes with it. Let's find healing in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Let's find encouragement in His Word. Praise God. Now, I'm. Uh, uh, it is Monday morning or Monday night, however you want to call it. Uh, you know, I want to get down here Sunday. I was just beat, tired, wore out, just all kinds of emotions and things going through my mind. And and today, uh, I was, you know, I was having trouble sleeping and so much on my mind. And I, and and I had a knock at the door and then a ding dong and knock at the door and a ding dong. And I I was, I was in a finally in a deep sleep. Uh, Mid honestly, an afternoon, kind of like an afternoon deep sleep, and I was just enjoying it, and uh, <laughs> and then I finally kind of it wouldn't stop. It's like you know what, man, this is something important. So I get up, and it's actually my brother, and uh, <laughs> and he he still he was determined to stay here, and he had something he wanted to give me, and and we and and uh, I called him, and I was a little grumpy, like what do you want? You know, is it an emergency? And I, he's sitting on the porch, and I'm in the house, and. No, I want to, you know, something to give you, and uh, so got dressed, and he came in, and we had a great day. To hit him, having a wonderful day, uh, afternoon together. He went, took off for a while, came back, and we spent the evening together. Um, it, it was wonderful. So God, God knew just what I needed today, and and, and and what he needed, and my other brother called, shared a little testimony too of something went on with him today, and you know, God just was. Looking over, looking over his children, and, and, and I truly trust, and I know if I got a chance to hear your story, I guarantee you got something to talk about. may not have been today. It'll probably be tomorrow. But if we walk with God, and we put our faith in God, and we trust God, he's not going to leave us. He is with us, even though we feel like we're all alone, and where are you, God? And we're just mentally drained and wore out and beat down sometimes. And when that happens to us, here comes the depression. Now we're going to talk about this. And we're going to show you in God's word how do we handle depression. How do we deal with loneliness, okay? All right, so here we go. All right, I'm going to take a drink of water. And uh, First Kings chapter 19, okay? And verse 1. Now, a little background here before we get into this. This is about Elijah, who in, in chapter 18 had challenged and took on the Baal prophets uh, who were against the Lord. And one man, with God's power and God's anointing, defeated 400 false, false prophets. Okay? You know, I preached a week and a half ago or so about the rapture and Jesus' main thing he kept saying over and over as a sign of the end times, take heed that no man deceive you. So here's Elijah, one man. Many times I preach and talk about where Jesus said, many are called, but few are chosen. One man, 400 false prophets, not speaking in line with the word of God. Amen? With God's complete, true word. But there was one man who stood for God's word. Are you going to be that man? Are you going to be that woman? Are you going to be that teenager? Are you going to be that young adult? Are you going to be that young woman? Are you going to be that young man? Are you going to be that old, old, older man and woman? Whatever your age is at, wherever you're at in life, are you going to be that one who stands for God's word? Because if you do, there's so much blessings. That's the only, that is the only way to go. There's no, there's no other direction. There's no other option. There's no other way to go. But to be completely sold out for Jesus Christ. Amen? So, Elijah had made his stand for the Lord, and then God gave him great victory. But many times, folks, and let me take this down to many times, y'all. I know we're on, not too many of us are out there fighting 400 bell prophets on a mountainside, okay? Uh, but, it, folks, it, it could be a divorce, losing a loved one. 
you just dealt with you know dealt with a funeral situation you're dealing with somebody's passed away could be a, a breakup in a relationship could be t- uh, starting into a new job uh, it, it could be the beginning of a new relationship there could be whatever is something that that takes so much of your energy and your focus at the same time you're walking with God you're walking in simplicity and humility through that situation where you're just you're just keeping yourself focused on God and you're handling all these things that are coming at you all these wave it's just wave 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 when you're trying to stay close to God and you're trying to pray through and you're, everything that you maybe you're, you're feeding on for the last couple of weeks and some scriptures, maybe God gave you a revelation before the situation came. And that revelation through that situation, that time is actually carrying you through that time. It's actually giving you the strength to endure that situation. OK, but there comes a point that when you finally get to the other side of that situation, you finally get through it. That you're tired. There, there, you, you, a depression many times can begin to settle in over over to, on your spirit. A depression or, or a loneliness. And how we respond to it, folks, is how we get out of it. And that, well, we're going to talk about that right here, okay? Okay, now listen. Here we go. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. My, um... Peanut butter. Peanut butter. (laughs) All right. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. I just talked about the Baal prophets. And with with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I not... If I make not thy life as a life of one of them, by to whom tomorrow about this time... And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life. So right away, she said, Jezebel, Jezebel, there are some Jezebels going on right now, folks. What was Jezebel? She was a woman. She was a painted face woman that, you know what the Bible says? God ended ended up feeding her to the dogs. Amen? Folks, whatever, whatever, whatever this whole election thing right now, folks, you got a Jezebel that's coming to power. If, if this whole Biden thing plays out, we all know what I'm talking about. The, the Kamala woman, nothing but a spirit of Jezebel. Amen? Nothing but a spirit of Jezebel to rise up against God. But the scripture's got to be fulfilled. Amen? God's word's going to keep on marching on and continue to be fulfilled. But God's got people. God's got a, 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 an anointed group that's set aside that's not gonna that's not gonna bow down to this, that's not gonna cave under it, it's gonna continue to worship God and stay with Christ Jesus the Word. Because God is greater. Amen. This Jezebel spirit right here put Elijah under fear. He got scared, he ran, he got depressed. But we're gonna show you how God dealt with him. And later on, what God do with 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 let me tell you what happened to Elijah? He was scared of Jezebel. What happened to him? God raptured him out of here. He took a rapture. Amen. And Jezebel was fed to the dogs. That's God's word. Amen. These Jezebel leaders and so forth. And this Jezebel right now is about to take over vice president of this country. Amen. Elijah's true, true child of God who followed the complete word of God. Continue to keep your eyes on Christ. God is with us. If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. Nothing will stand before you, folks. Hallelujah, praise God. There is nothing to fear. Amen. Because God's in control. So if that's the way this plays out, rest, rest in Him. We're going to see how it all plays out. We're going to sit back and watch. Amen. Now, so Elijah, remember this, folks, and I've seen this in my own life. Times when anxiety takes over me, when I battle anxiety, let me give you all a little something, little something here to think about. I've learned. It's when I'm so mentally drained. It's when I've gone through a great mental situation, excuse me, a great mental strain, and I've put myself, and knowing I was gonna put, had to put myself through something, that after that period of time and, that, and that, that emotion and all that it pulls out of me, excuse me, I find myself very vulnerable then, like Elijah, like you find yourself. He was tired. He was, he was, uh, uh, he was meant physically drained. He was mentally drained. He just got he just defeated four hundred Baal prophets for the Lord. He just did a great thing for God. 
Okay? But he's now he's, the, he's tired. He's wore out. And then one woman. He just reads 400. But now this woman said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do to you what you did to these prophets. And Elijah, who's mentally drained, who's tired, who's feeling, starting to feel lonely, battling discouragement, he starts running from her. He runs for his life out of total, complete fear. Yeah, the same guy who defeated 400 Baal prophets is now running from one woman out of fear. Okay? Because depression began to take a grip on him. Loneliness began to speak to his soul and his mind. And that emotion, which was nothing but lies, it was nothing but a lie, but it, it felt real to him and it, and it then guided his reaction. Him being still the true child of God, folks. Amen? Folks, feelings are not fact. You can't base your life upon feelings. You want your feelings to, to begin to, to, to change? Start walking in the, go the gospel truth, and your feelings will catch up with it. Put this first. Walk in this. Then your feelings will finally catch up with, with what is true. God gives us not a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and a sound mind. Amen? So when you're, un when you're in depression... I've been there. I know it. Oh, I know it. In loneliness, those feelings are actually lying vanities. They're not real. You got to you got to go there and we're going to break down some points here. I got I think five points that we're going to hit on of how to deal with it and how to get out of it, okay? Now, so he runs. He's running. He's running for his life, okay? Comes to a little place called Beersheba, which belonged to Judah. And, and uh, left his servant there, and, but he himself went a day's journey, went a day's journey into the wilderness. Now he's getting, I'm going to get, I mean, a day's journey, I'm getting way out, I'm getting as far away from this woman, I'm scared out of my mind, she's going to kill me, okay? And came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die. Depression. Lord, just let me die. I'm tired. I'm wore out. I've gone through. I've done all of this. You've been there, guys? I've dealt with, you're saying, God, I've dealt with this. I've raised my, I've, I'm raising two kids. I'm raising three kids. I've raised my kids. I, I, I've gone through this. I just lost a parent. I'm dealing with this. I'm dealing with that. I, this, this, this job, the stress of this job, this relationship, this marriage, all these different things, and you just get tired. You're wore out. You're stretched beyond your human self. But along the way, something you begin to forget about. We want to address this. How do we get out of it? And how do we then learn from it to not allow ourselves to go to that place again? Okay? Now I will say this. Out of all the emotions we deal with, depression is actually a healing emotion, believe it or not, folks. Because when depression comes on you, it makes you, it, God uses it to heal you. It, it's, it becomes an emotion where you begin to do a, you got to start checking under the hood, so to speak. Like, man, okay, my thoughts, you know, what's going on in my life. God can begin to use that to deal with you, to show you unrepentant sin, to show you things in your life you need to confess to God, to, to, to areas you need to make adjustments to whatever it is. You're, we're going to get into this. It's a chance for you, for these emotions to come to the surface. Because your body, it, it makes you slow down. It makes you have to be in a, do, do some maintenance and some self-care to allow yourself to heal. Okay? Now, he says here, it isn't, isn't enough now, O oh Lord. Uh, take away my life. Like, take me. I'm done. I want to die. For I am better. I'm not better than my father's. Now he's just guilt, false guilt's coming in. I'm not even better than my father's. Elijah, hey, buddy. You just, you just destroyed 400 false prophets. Uh, I think you're better than your fathers, but depression lies to us. It puts us false guilt. It tells us, oh, you're no good. Nobody loves you. Nobody loves blah, 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 blah. All these things, right? Okay. Now, as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, I'm going to read this here, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake, bacon on the coals, and a cruise of water at his head. And he ate, he ate and drank, 
and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him. And he said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. Arose he and did eat and drink, and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto her of the mount of God. Now I'm going to continue here, and then I'm going to, then I'm going to do some breaking downs, okay? And he came, in verse 9, he, he, he came thither into a cave and lodged there, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And said unto him, What doest thou what doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. Amen. Mm. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth and stand up, stand up on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. The Lord passed by. This is beautiful. And a great and strong wind rent the mountains. Just whoosh, the mountains just shaking, right? Rocks probably flying, right? Yeah, and right here and breaking pieces and rocks within the rocks before the Lord. So break, imagine the mountains shaking, rocks are flying everywhere in its direction. Because the Lord passed by. This is beautiful. But the Lord, now think about this. The Lord was not in the wind. Okay? And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. Amen? And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. Remember that. A still, small voice. Amen. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou hear, Elijah? What do you hear, Elijah? What are you hearing, Elijah? What are you hearing, daughter of God? What are you hearing, son of God? All the noise around us, folks. All the noise, the earthquake and the, and the fire, so to speak, the wind, all these things that happen around Elijah, all that is going on around us, what are you hearing? Listen to the still, small voice. That's where you find truth. This is God's voice. Amen? His word. This is what establishes and, and, and puts your, your mind back. Because your emotions are, are not true. They're everywhere. <laughs> Devil's fire, earthquake, wind, all these things, right? And your emotions are just all these. I know I'm a very emotional person. I'm fire. I'm passionate. Amen. I'm on fire. But sometimes my emotions lie to me. Amen. It's the word that stabilizes my spirit. And it's the truth because it's the you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Free from that lying emotion, that depression, that loneliness. It's an absolute lie. And the God of peace, the Bible says in Romans, I believe 16, 20, just top of my head. And the God of peace shall crush Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen? The grace of God. And he crushes Satan under our feet by the, by the word of God. Amen? Praise God. Now, let me continue on here. So now he says, what do you hear? And he says to, to the Lord, I have been very jealous of the Lord. Folks, I, I feel the same way. I'm very jealous of the Lord because I preach many times about these churches, these, these false prophets and pastors and preachers and teachers and false Christians, Pharisee spirits. And over here standing for this complete pure word of God, preaching it with all my heart and my soul. Amen. I'm zealous for his word. I can relate to this feeling. He's feeling right here. He says, I'm jealous for you, Lord. But the Lord reminds Elijah. He says, he says here, well, Elijah just continues to say, well, because, because I'm jealous for you, Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, Saying thy prophets with the sword, I only am left, and they seek my life, take it away. 
Now, and then the Lord says to him, Go return to the way to, uh, on the way to the wilderness to, to Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Hazal to be king of Assyria. And Jehu the son of Nephshi. So right away, God's first commission him, Go anoint some other, other uh, go anoint these individuals. Go bless others. Okay? First step out of depression, get, get your thoughts off yourself. Start doing something for somebody else. Amen? It ain't, it, one way to get out of depression, quit thinking about you, okay? Because that's what depression does. It gets you so absorbed in yourself and your mind and what your pain is, what you're feeling, what your emotions are telling you. And the longer you stay there, it'll just grip you and take you farther down, 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 down. Amen? Now, in Elijah, the son of Shepot, Shepot, I'm these names, of the, <laughs> Abala Mahala, shall thou anoint to be the prophet in thy room. And it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword. So first he's like, go out and bless others. Go out and anoint others because you. I know you feel like you're all alone, right? Okay? And him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu sh sh shall Elisha, sh Elisha slay. And then he goes on to, he goes on to remind, once I want to tell Elijah something. He says, listen to this. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel. All the knees... Which have not bail, bowed unto Baal. They not bowed down unto Baal and worshiped the idol, the false god. He said, God's trying to tell Elijah, Elijah, hey, you're not alone. You feel alone. Loneliness and depression, it's gripping you. It's lying to you. But you're not alone. There are 7,000 others who've not even fallen down and worship Baal. They're still worshiping me. Amen, Jehovah God. And every mouth which hath not kissed him. Amen. Now, now I want to break this down, okay? So I want to. That's my that's my background story here to, to use as a basis from uh, of depression. What causes what causes depression and loneliness? Okay, I want to hit some points here, and I got some scriptures to tie into it. Number one, overworked. Okay, you could say you look at Elijah's life; he was overworked. He just he just he just killed four hundred prophets right with the sword. That's a pretty big battle. That's a pretty rough day. Okay, uh, he was overworked, folks. We 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 get overworked. We uh, if you you know, and I'm not sometimes saying, sometimes not even so much as overwork with your with just physical labor, but it's the emotional stuff. Sometimes this this past year has overworked the minds of God's people like any year that I can think of in a long time. I think you all would agree. The fear, the worry, the uncertainty. I mean, our minds, if we've never really, it feels like we've never even got a break. It's just been an, a wave, whew, a wave, whew, a wave. Our minds have been overworked, folks. And many times when it gets overworked, that's when depression can, can leak in. And it also can be overworked from uh, dealing with family issues or. You know, going through a loss or a divorce or a, a, a bankruptcy, a breakup. Uh, for me, like, you know, starting this new business in the midst, you know, I look at my life to last, you know, I've gone through this pandemic, overworked mind. My businesses, my two gyms have been just kicked to, to the curb. It's been horrible dealing with that depression and with questioning at times. Why aren't people still showing the love of support that they should be showing? And I've had a lot of Elijah moments, right? Because I poured my heart into that thing, and then that's been a struggle, and and then you know I'm going through that, and then I lose my dad, and then six weeks later I'm opening up a new business, and, and, and I've gotten so much going on in my mind that it it, it it started catching up with me recently, and I, I was starting to have some Elijah moments, you know, have been feeling way lately, like Lord, okay, what's going on here? But I know I know well enough to know that it's a lie. And I know what i got to do to get it fixed, folks. And this is what we're going to continue to focus on. We're going to hit these points. What we got to do to overcome depression, to deal with our loneliness, okay? I said overwork. Matthew 11, 28. Come. This is our Lord Jesus. What's the, first, what's, what's the thing here? Uh, now, folks, stop your minds for a minute. We're, again, the, how long these messages go, you can pause it and go back and keep listening. Okay? I'm not rushing through this. We're, we want, this is God's, I'm not preaching to, to appease men. 
I'm preaching to serve Him, to honor to Him, to honor my Lord, to preach His Word, and, and, and to, to to not shun to declare to you to all you to hold the whole gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, stop your minds for a minute. He says, "Come unto me." There's an, there's an, there, then that means there now has to become a conscious effort on my part that what got me here, that I got to stop. I got to stop everything I'm doing. However I've been doing, handling, getting through this, whatever it is. And I got to begin to start, I got to start coming unto him. With prayer, talking to him, getting in his word. That's the first step, folks. You've been overworked, you know, wherever you're, this depression's settling on you, you're down, you're feeling lonely. Come unto me, he says, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I, I will give you rest. His rest is a rest that's, that's like no other. Amen. Many times when people talk about having trouble sleeping, folks, it's an emotional thing. Your spirit is not at rest. You got so much going on inside you that that's why you can't sleep. I know. Amen. And if we don't come unto him and bring that stuff to him, then then what what's a lot of people do? They go take they go take medicine. They go run a pharmacia that I preached about months ago. Pharmacy with side effects and all this garbage instead of coming unto Him. Amen? Taking it all to Him. Jesus Christ. And letting Him take it all from you. Because He said you've been laboring within yourself. You can't do it on your own. You're not built for this on your own. you got to come unto Him. you got to come to Him. And He said, I'll give you rest. Rest. I've told the story before of the woman who had the dream, and she saw. She said, and I'll "Do my best to remember." But you know, she saw uh, these little bags, and they and they were justifiable reasons to carry these bags. It was like worry about your grandkids, or worry about your job, worry about your your marriage, worry about your finances, worry about your cafe, Paul. Whatever it was. In, those, in the dream, it was Satan. Little demons were, were convincing her to keep picking them up. Well, you know what? It makes sense. I'm supposed to worry about this. And she just and she was just weighing down. And before you know, she's carrying all these bags. And she's weighing down all that stuff that Satan lies to us and tells us in our emotions that are lies because it doesn't line up with the Word. It doesn't line up with the Word. Come unto me, all you labor and heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Fear not, little flock, for it is your good Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom of God. He says, my eye is on the sparrow. The sparrow, the little bird wakes up tomorrow morning. He doesn't, he's not a welfare line. He's not worrying.